Hello, my name is Michelle Sudbury and I'm the STEM coordinator at the Texas Education Agency. I'm excited to release the instructional series on the STEM toolkit. The STEM toolkit was designed to help a district or a campus design and implement a district-wide or a campus-wide STEM program. This video series will consist of five videos that will go through the tools step-by-step. Step. This is the second video for the STEM toolkit series. If you've not watched the introductory video, you'll want to stop and go back and watch that in order to understand the STEM framework. The objectives for this video series are to empower leaders and with information to help guide and support STEM decisions. Participants will be able to define the indicators of high quality STEM education as they relate to the TEA STEM framework, communicate the purpose of the STEM resources within the STEM toolkit, recognize the logistical considerations that are important in planning and implementing successful STEM programs, and explore ways to include community stakeholders in STEM programming. One of the first steps in developing the STEM programming in Texas was to establish a common definition for STEM. We have defined STEM education as a method of hands-on teaching and learning where students learn to apply academic content by creatively solving real world problems with innovative design-based thinking to prepare students for future career opportunities. When we talk about STEM throughout this series, we are talking about a method of instruction, not a course or a program. In the last video, we went through the STEM planning tools. Once your district has a strong plan in place, it will be time to implement that plan. When implementing a STEM program, there are three areas to think about, instruction, evaluation, and culture and climate. The Texas Education Agency has developed three sets of tools to support districts and campuses in their STEM implementation. The set of tools are designed to support the STEM classroom instructor. The second set of tools are designed for self-reflection and to measure the effectiveness of STEM programming. And the third set of tools are to gauge and nurture a STEM climate and culture in a district or campus. This video will cover the first section of the STEM implementation tools. Now we're gonna go live on the website to look at the instructional tools uh, within the implementation toolkit. You'll notice for this, uh, particular piece of the series, we're going to be looking at four tools. I'm going to take us straight to the STEM toolkit. If you are not sure how to find this page, uh, the previous video takes you to the landing page of the TEA website and walks you to where to find the toolkit. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here for the Texas Toolkit for STEM Implementation Tools. And I'm gonna scroll down to this first section. So you see the three sections here, instructional tools, STEM reflection, and then the STEM culture and climate. And I'm gonna to go to the first tool in this sequence. Again, we have arranged these in an order uh, from beginning to end, however, depending on the instructor for the class will depend on which tools are most needed at a certain time. For this particular toolkit, the uh, planning tools were very sequential and built on each other. And that is not how the implementation tools work. So again, they will be based on need. So we'll start out with the STEM instructional planning guide. When I click on this, this is a guide to help a teacher who has never done STEM instruction before. They've not embedded a PBL or the engineering design process into a lesson cycle. So it is an informational guide. So it's not just a, a lesson plan template, but instead it helps build uh, the instructional context needed for instruction. 
So at the beginning, you'll see uh, the 5E lesson cycle, which is what we give an example uh, for embedding STEM into already lessons that are happening in the classroom. We go through the engineering design process. We also have a section for connection to the big ideas. So being able to look cross-curricular at the different subject areas and find connections. And so we've given lots of examples here. We also uh, include in this plan, a planning graphic organizer, which you'll also see separately, but I'm, also, I'm gonna go ahead and go over it here. This is so you take a theme. So let's say in science, we're doing a particular topic. I would put that standard in this uh, tan part of the wheel and maybe the topic. And then in my common planning time, I can share what my project is. And then my other teachers in the building can chime in with you know, that would fit well with what we're doing in social studies during this unit or what math components could fit in. And so it's a wheel of integration and we call this the eye of integration. So it's just a graphic organizer to help plan. Then we have a unit overview, how the 5E uh, unfolds in the classroom typically. This is the planning template that a, an educator can actually use and fill out for their, their daily plans. Then we have um, down here at the bottom, a more detailed guide for doing the 5E, what the teacher's doing, what the students are doing, and then how to implement STEM. So you'll see uh, during the explore is a typical inquiry type, um, uh, lesson. Then we have the explain. And the elaborate is where we have uh, shown how to embed the engineering design process. This fits very naturally here, but engineering design challenges and PBL can happen at any point during a lesson cycle. There are times where you might want to do it at the beginning for an engage. It can also be used at the end as a summative. Uh, we have chosen where uh, most people implement is during the elaborate, pushing students thinking um, to the next level in applying it to real world. Uh, so we have included it in this part. Then the evaluate is the last step. We also put in a guide for differentiation. And then how do you do an engineering design challenge? So this is almost like a second guide that's embedded here. And it will just help a teacher who is unfamiliar with design challenges, how to design one um, from start to finish, from the prep all the way through um, each step of identifying constraints, criteria, and then all the way through to the final product and communicating that product. So this is just an informational guide for your educators to help support them. I'm gonna go back here and then look at integration strategies. This is a very simple tool we were asked to develop uh, by many districts. Uh, when you're reading through STEM material, they will use different terms of integration. Uh, cross-curricular or cross-disciplinary is very um, common but you'll also hear transdisciplinary um, used more now than uh, prior. And so we had a lot of questions. Are they the same thing? Are they different things? Uh, do they look different in different contexts? Like what is all this terminology for integration? So we just made a simple one pager to help um, districts identify the different types of integration, uh, we are not recommending one or the other. It is just a terminology guide. Um, and then down at the bottom is a visual just to help you with identifying uh, where they overlap because there is a lot of overlap, which is what makes them a little bit tricky to identify. Um, so this is just a support guide. 
Then you see the graphic organizer here that we just went over in the planning guide. This is it pulled out separately uh, with instructions. So if you need a little bit more context for that, uh, this is just one page here. And then the final tool is the teaching uh, and learning progression. And this tool is very special because it takes an educator's journey from a traditional classroom to an inquiry-based STEM classroom. And so when uh, sometimes you ask a teacher to do this transition, it's overwhelming. Uh, and so giving clear descriptors of what does this look like in the classroom really helps. So each area we have broken down. So this first one is progression of assessment in STEM teaching and learning. So here's the starting point. This would be a traditional classroom. Uh, what it looks like kind of at the midpoint and then what it looks like at the advanced level. If these things are developed, it will also help a teacher in developing their t-test rating for assessment. So in each section, we do call out the t-test uh, test rubric uh, dimension down at the bottom. So for this one, the dimension would be 1.2. And so the, the teacher, as they are teaching in the classroom, can gather evidence to present to an administrator um, for getting a higher rating in this area of t-test. Then you'll see um, learning spaces, the same down here with your t-test call out and how it looks at traditional and then in the um, more advanced level. The next section of the tool is skill fluency. And then again, the progression, the cognitive rigor, the student-centered learning instruction. And this actually hits two different sections of the t-test rubric. Sustained learning. And integrated teaching and learning. And then at the very end, we have a glossary. So any terminology that might be unfamiliar uh, to uh, an educator or administrator, those are defined here at the end. So those are our instructional tools uh, to help actually implement um, in the classroom. I'm gonna go back to the presentation and go to our last slide here where you'll see the survey uh, bit.ly and also QR code. If you haven't used a QR code before, it's very simple. Just open your camera, it'll automatically capture the QR code and send you to uh, the appropriate location to the survey. There's only six questions. These help us in our uh, serving you better in our development. We would really appreciate your feedback. They're designed to be about one to two minutes. Uh, it's all a quick, fast, click response. So we'll ask that um, you please do that before you uh, log off. And I will see you in the next video for the instructional series. And in the next one, we will be going over the evaluation tools. Have a great day.